Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to episode 36 of my Logic Pro 10 video tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at using the external MIDI tracks in Logic, and I'll show you how you can use external MIDI tracks to um, use external synthesizers. Now, this can be done with external synths that are USB, ones that just use standard MIDI in and out connectors, uh, or with something like an iPhone or an iPad. Uh, actually, for today's uh, example, I'm going to be using uh, an iPad, and I'm using the iRig MIDI adapter, which basically just has a standard iPad 2 uh, connector that uh, has a standard 5-pin DIN in and out, uh, MIDI in and out um, connector coming out of it. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm plugging those in and outs into my audio interface, which is an Alessis uh, IO26 uh, just tabletop interface. Um, you could do this with, say, like a USB uh, MIDI interface uh, or really any uh, USB or Firewire audio interface that has um, MIDI in and output. Or again, you could do it with a device that's simply just uh, USB. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that the device that's receiving uh, and sending uh, MIDI data uh, is recognized by our computer so that uh, Logic will recognize it. So what we're going to do is, uh, what I'm going to do first is go to the spotlight up here. I'm just going to type in audio MIDI because I wa want to find a utility that's called the audio MIDI setup. And in here, uh, the audio devices window will probably pop up first but we're going to go to window and show the MIDI window. Now, for me, I'm, I'm looking to make sure that my Alessis Firewire interface is being shown as a MIDI interface as well, which it is. It's here, it's not grayed out. If it was grayed out, uh, and it, it, it like for instance, if your interface is plugged in and it's still grayed out, you can try rescan MIDI, uh, and if you don't see it at all, um, you probably need to install the correct drivers for it. Now, if you're using a USB synthesizer or some sort of USB uh, device, uh, it should also show up here. And again, if it's not, you probably need to install the uh, proper drivers for it. Okay, so what we need are, we need actually two things. We need the external MIDI track. That's how we're going to get the MIDI data to the iPad or to your ex external synth. And then we also need an audio track. The audio track's going to receive the signal, the audio signal, from uh, the synthesizer from the iPad. So essentially what I have is just my iRig, as I explained before, and then coming out of the output of my iPad, I just have an eighth inch to uh, stereo um, quarter inch connectors. Actually, it's two mono connectors, and those connectors are plugged into inputs three and four on my audio interface. So we need an external MIDI track to send MIDI data, and then we need an audio track to monitor and, and record uh, the audio information coming from the iPad. So I'm going to go up to track, new tracks, or you can just remember the key command, option command N. I'm going to create an external MIDI track here. And then I'm also going to create a audio track. So let me just zoom these out a bit so I can see them a little better. Um, for the external MIDI track, it's probably going to pop up saying GM device. What we need to do is we need to go to the track parameters here, unhide this window, and make sure that the port that we're on matches the uh, audio interface or MIDI interface that we're, uh, that we're inputting to, that the iPad's plugged into. So again, right now my iPad's plugged into my Alessis interface. So the port, I need to choose Alessis Firewire, Alessis Firewire port one. Um, some devices have multiple ports, so you might see port one, two, three, four. Uh, mine just has one pair of in and out connectors, so it's just port one. Um, the other thing that you'll see here is if you're using a, just a direct USB device and skipping the audio interface altogether, um, you'll see that device here. So I'm just going to choose that. I'm also going to choose channel, not channel one, I'm going to choose channel all. So I don't really have to worry about MIDI channels. And just for fun, I'm going to change the icon by right clicking 
and I'll just give it something maybe a little more appropriate. Unfortunately, I don't think there's an iPad icon, so I'll just use this one. Um, for this track, I'm going to call this MIDI to iPad, because that's essentially what it's doing. It's sending MIDI data to my iPad. Um, on my audio track, I need to monitor and be able to record the audio coming from the iPad. So I'm going to call this um, audio from iPad. And what I'm also going to do is on this audio track, I'm going to set the input on the track to inputs three and four. That's where the uh, output of the iPad is plugged into. So I'm going to choose input three and four. Now, if I just either input monitor or arm this audio track, I should be able to just play the keys, the, uh, the, the synthesizer on my iPad, and I should hear sound. Now for this, uh, I'm using a an iPad app that's called Alchemy. It's from Camel Audio. Um, I really like it. It's uh, it's just it's a kind of a cool uh, synth for iPad. It's pretty cheap as well. Um, they've got drum sounds. They've got synth sounds. They also have a kind of um, it's like an eight zoned XY pad, so you can kind of morph morph the sound as well. Um, so. That's the iPad app I'm using. There are a lot of iPad synths out there. Some are MIDI, some are not MIDI. Um, some will work that, like this, some won't work like this. So I'm just using this one because I know it works. Um, now in advance, up here on this track that just says MIDI idea, I've created a just a very simple um, MIDI idea just with a few notes here. And I'm going to drag that region down onto my MIDI to iPad track, which is again the external MIDI track. And as long as I either input monitor or arm for recording my audio track, I should be able to just press play and we'll hear the audio coming from the iPad up here without me actually playing the iPad at all. So let's just press play and see if this works. Now the reason why you're seeing signal but you're not actually hearing any audio is because I have ARM for recording and input monitoring turned on. You have to turn on input monitoring just for listening and uh, turn on ARM for recording if you're recording. So I'm just going to turn on input monitoring and let's uh, see if this works. All right, now to record this, I'm gonna turn off input monitoring and just arm the track, go back to the beginning and just hit record just like I normally would. I'm going to turn off the, I actually already have turned off the metronome for this. There's no reason for the metronome to be on because I'm not trying to stay in time. The, the data is already in time, so there's no point in actually uh, turning on the metronome. So I'm just gonna hit R to record. Now the waveform that was recorded is a, a bit quiet, so I might want to pull up the gain on the inputs of my interface. And this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play around with the, the XY, like the eight zone XY pad uh, feature on the Alchemy synth just to get some different sounds in here. And there you go. So that's how you can use external synthesizers like the iPad or an external hardware synth, either with USB or uh, MIDI input and output cables. Now you can also use um, your external synth or, our iP or your iPad even 
as a MIDI controller. Um, if you guys want me to go over that, I'll have to do it in another video, but instead of just using it as a sound generator, you can also use it as an in, just an input controller where you're just kind of playing in notes, but then triggering uh, sounds and logic. So that's also a possibility. Now the advantage to this is, you know, if you've got certain sounds um, on a certain synth, external synth, iPad, whatever, um, that you can't really get anywhere else, this is a great way to grab those and still be able to edit the MIDI data and edit the performance here. Uh, the other great thing about this is you don't necessarily have to print the audio in place. Um, if you want, what you can do instead of creating an audio track is you can actually create an aux track in your mixer. So just Command-2 to go to Mixer, then go to Options, Create New Auxiliary Channel Strip. It's also uh, Control-N. And on that aux track, you just make the input of that aux track three and four. I'll just pull this aside here so you can see it. Just delete my audio track here. There we go. So now I just have an external MIDI track and then I have uh, an aux track on the mixer that's uh, receiving um, audio from the iPad. So I'll just say from iPad. And anytime I press play now, let me just fix one quick thing here. There we go. Uh, never mind this send I'm adding on here. It's uh, the send is actually going to my video capture, so I can actually uh, hear the audio um, that I've captured. So don't worry about that. You won't have to do that. But I've basically just again I have an aux track that has an input that's input three and four. And as long as, as long as the iPad's plugged in and the whole kind of, you know, signal flow of MIDI to iPad audio back to the audio interface, as long as that's in place, you can press play, you can edit, you can mix uh, this MIDI recording along with any other instruments that you have in the session. The only thing you have to keep in mind is if I go to bounce this with like, maybe I've got drums and stuff in here and other things going on. Um, you have to make sure that you go to, uh, when you go to File, uh, uh, Bounce, so it's going to be, oh, that's right, they changed it. It's Bounce, and then Project or Section, or just hit Command-B to Bounce. You have to make sure that you use a uh, real-time real bounce. If you use an offline bounce, it will not uh, send signal, um, you will not get signal from uh, your external synth or your iPad. Um, so you have to make sure that when you bounce, you use a real-time bounce. Uh, to be honest, I, I prefer just printing the audio in place after you're done with it. You know, maybe mute this and just save it as a, you know, as a backup just in case you need to change some notes later. And then just keep the audio, you know, like I did it before. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.